Hi everyone and welcome back to the series of Python Unleashed. My name is Ajay and today's topic is we are going to understand what we mean by operator overloading and we are going to learn about it. Okay, so operator overloading is basically a very important feature when we talk about when we are working with classes and objects. In fact, it is one of the features that we call it as polymorphism. So one of the example of polymorphism is one of the features of very important features that uh, an object oriented language should have. So this particular example for polymorphism we can have as operator overloading. Okay, so when we have an operator, for example, we have operator, operators like arithmetic operators and relational operators. So for example, we have an operator that is a plus operator, right? This is used for adding two numbers. So when we try to add two numbers, that is two plus five, so in that case, it will give the answer as seven because it, is, it will do the addition of two integer numbers. But the same operator, if you try to add two strings, so that is A plus B. Now A and B are two characters. So in that case, this will give the answer as AB. So basically this will join the two strings. So operator overloading or polymorphism means that is, um, you know, there is one operator and there are multiple forms. So the plus operator, it, it is used to add two numbers, isn't it? And the same plus operator is also used to add two, two strings, not adding, we are actually joining two strings, right? In fact, this plus operator is also used to join two list and tuples also, isn't it? So this is called as operator overloading. So we have used these features before, we have done these operations, we have joined two strings. So that is an example of operator overloading. Now everything looks fine till now, but what if we are working with objects? Suppose we have two objects like A and B. Now A and B are two objects that belongs to a particular class, okay? And then we try to add those two objects like A plus B. Now A and B are not normal variables, they are objects. So what implementation we should have or what's going to happen if we have this facility, if we provide this facility of adding two objects. So what exactly is going to happen? What will be the implementation? And for that implementation, we have certain built-in uh, methods, okay, uh, from Python. And these are the building methods. That is double underscore add, double underscore. This particular method, it is used for overloading the plus operator. Okay, in fact, every building operator starts with a double underscore and ends with a double underscore, understand it. So you can see for plus, we have this particular method that we can implement. So we can define what exactly should happen if the user tries to add two objects, okay? And for the minus operator we have this particular sub method okay so till here you can see that is the modulus we have uh, these are you know arithmetic operators and from here you can see these are the relational operators now these are not only the building methods that are available there are many more but i just have few of them out here okay so if you try to add two objects so we are going to implement this particular method okay in fact this method will automatically get evoked if we try to add two objects okay so this will automatically get evoked in fact every building methods automatically gets evoked even the init function that is the constructor we never evoke that it gets automatically evoked where when it gets evoked when we try to create an object when we create an object it is then when that init constructor gets evoked. So let's get started. We'll move to Python now. And we will have a class that is the class A. Okay. And then the constructor that is the init self, which is a reference to the object. And I define one attribute that is x is equal to zero. So whenever I try to create an object, this will get evoked and it will have this attribute x as zero. But and now I'm not going to have some uh, methods out here to accept the, accept the value for x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a parameter out here that is a default parameter. So while creating the object itself, I'm going to pass a value and that value I'm going to as assign to this object variable x. 
So this x and this x are two different x understand this is just a normal variable but this is the objective variable. So whatever value I pass okay that value will get assigned to x and then that value will get assigned to the object variable x okay and that's it then we will try to create objects that is a is equal to small a since this is a uh, python is case sensitive so this is capital a is a class and this is just an object okay and then b so these are the two objects right and i try to pass value like 5 and 2 so everything is fine and then I do something like A plus B and try to print C. Okay, that thing I gave it to C and I try to print C. Now let us run this and you can see the error out here that is unsupported operator that is plus because they are not implemented. The Python gets confused because these are two objects, not normal variables. So what we are supposed to do and that is where we have this type error. Okay, so let us implement this and for plus we have the method that is that is uh, add and self okay and then i will have something like result okay what is what why we have this result now you'll understand this let us have self dot okay i'll have temp variable and i will collect that addition into 10 so i'll have this x then plus result Okay, result dot x okay result dot x now what wh what exactly this means uh, we, are, we are going to understand that and then I say return 10 and that's it okay now let us understand what exactly is this okay once I say a plus b now I have an implementation I have used that built-in method that is add so now that I try to add these two objects, Python knows that there is an implementation of this particular built-in method. So this will evoke this function. This particular statement will evoke this method. That is a built-in method and this is what we have implemented. Okay. So now that we have this implementation and we try to add two objects, so now Python doesn't get confused because there is an implementation for that I have done it. Okay for this particular object so once i say a plus b so this method will get evoked automatically and what will be self to which it is going to have the reference so self will be this a okay it is so a is going to pass to the self and to result this particular object is going to get passed okay this particular object is going to get passed so result will be pointing to b and self is a reference to a so once i say self dot x so it will refer to this five why because the object a dot x is five so self dot x is going to be five plus result dot x so what is the uh, you know the the argument that i pass that is b which is an object so result over here is also an object right so once i say result dot x so it will refer to two why two because b dot x is Two, and that is what I'm passing as an argument and is going to be received by this parameter that is result so once I say result dot x it is going to be 2 and over here it is going to be 5 and then I'm returning that it will be received by C okay now if I run this we have this output as 7 right but understand one thing that this c is just a normal variable why because i'm just returning a integer value it is going to get received by c so c will turn out to be a simple integer variable what but what if you know it doesn't make sense they're adding two objects so basically even c should be an object isn't it if i add two integer number and assign it to some a and b are two integer numbers and i assign that addition to c so even c will be of integer type isn't it so c over here since i'm adding two objects so c out here should also be an object so how to do that simply i will just create a new class out here just understand this so what i'm doing over here is just a new class is getting created why because i'm just use that name class name a just like we have done over here can you see this a and that the value same thing is happening a and then the value and what's the value that's the addition 
and that will get assigned to C. So C now will be a new class. Now if I try to run this and it is just going to give me a reference. Can you see this? Why reference? Because we are not implementing, we are trying to print the object and not a normal variable. And in my previous tutorial we know if you try to print an object, so what we are supposed to do, we are supposed to use a building method again that is the str and it starts with a double underscore, ends with a double underscore, right? So we need to use this particular method if we try to print an object. And now let us implement this. Now I will say return and I'll convert that self dot x into string and I will return that string and that will be received, that will be returned over here. Okay, now if I try to run this and see we have this output seven. Okay, so this is how to do the implementations. Okay, now we had this addition. Okay, I told you that A, this particular method gets evoked by A and B is passed as the argument, isn't it? Uh, just to cross check this, what we will do, we will have one more method for subtraction that is sub. Okay, so this is the building method and the same implementation we will have. Okay. And this is the code that I will have and copy it over here. And simply I will make this as minus. Okay, so find minus three. Okay, let us have one more. Just copy this, paste this, and now I will minus, use the minus operator. So basically I'm doing subtraction of two objects. And let us see the output now. So for the first output we will get as seven and second as three. Why three? Because five minus two is three. And now if I make this as B and this as A, so what is going to happen? It is going to get evoked by B, right? So self is going to receive the value two and not five and A is going to be passed as an argument to result. So if you see the output now, we have the output as minus three. Why minus three? Because now it is getting two minus five, okay? So understand it gets evoked by this particular uh, you know, it gets evoked by the, in an expression. So this particular uh, expression that we have, the first is the operand that is B. So it is getting, going to get evoked by this, and this is going to get passed as an argument, okay? So this is how we can do it. And then we can have some others, like uh, we can have some relational operator, for example, the creator then. So let us implement this also. So let us have, let us first implement this double underscore gt that is greater than and self. So if you try to compare two, two objects, right? So what is going to happen? That implementation we can have. So I can simply say over here also, I will have a second variable. I will just use that compare that is com. Okay. And if I say if self dot x, if it is greater than com dot x, then just return return true, just a boolean value. Else, just return the boolean value false, right? And now you can see if I try to compare the objects, that is, if a greater than b, okay, and then simply I will print some message that is a is greater greater than b okay let's copy this let us have the else part and paste it and just i will change this as b greater than a if the condition goes false then this is what is going to get printed so over here i'm trying to compare if a is greater than b and i, ha I have this uh, implementation out here that is greater than built-in method so this method will get evoked and a will be it, it will get evoked by a and b will be passed to this comp understand it and if i run this now and you can see the output a is greater than b so seven because of this statement, minus three, because of this statement, and because of this statement, A greater than B, we have this output, why? Because A is five and B is two. That is the A dot X is five and B dot X is two. 
and that is where we have the outputs. For example, if I make this as 2 and this as 5, if I run this, and you can see B is greater than A. Why? Because this method is getting called. So it is getting evoked by A, passing the parameter, the argument B to call. So A dot X is 2, B dot X is 5. So this condition goes false and then the else part gets executed. Okay? So this is how you can work with operator overloading and this is the feature of polymorphism. This is a very important thing to understand in object oriented language. Polymorphism uh, plays a very important role. Okay? So that's it for today. Bye for now.